Hello everyone, my name is Alex, and in this screencast, I'm going to help you get up and running with i3. First off, what is i3? i3 is a window manager for Linux. What is a window manager, you might be asking? Well, a window manager is software that controls the placement and appearance of windows. Every system has a window manager, but what makes i3 particularly interesting is that it is specifically a tiling window manager. Rather than trying to explain what that means, I'll show you. If I open a window, for example the terminal window, you can see that it automatically fills all of the available screen space, so there's absolutely no wasted screen space, it's all working space. When I open a second window, the screen space is split evenly among the two windows. I can then switch between window 1 and window 2. When I open a third window, window 3, the screen space is split evenly again. At this point, I'm kind of running out of horizontal screen space, so I can start to insert windows vertically. For example, I can insert window 4 down here. At this point, it should be fairly obvious why it's referred to as a tiling window managers. The windows are effectively tiled in such a way that no window covers another. Even though i3 is predominantly a tiling window manager, it's also possible to stack windows like this and then flick between the various windows stacked at the top. You can also then go back into the floating mode you can even tab windows like this, to sort of tab like in a browser, and then go back to the floating window mode. Also, as you can probably appreciate, some windows would look a bit ridiculous if you maximize them. For example, dialogues. Look at this password dialogue. Imagine if it was maximized, it would look quite disproportionate. It's for that reason that i3 also supports floating windows, which is something most of you are familiar with from your experience with other operating systems, because most operating systems have a floating window manager. Throughout this clip, I used a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts and didn't really tell you which keyboard shortcuts I'm using. That's because this isn't the tutorial part of the video, that was just a quick demonstration to explain what i3 is, so that those of you who are interested in it can continue watching. In the next clip, I'll take a clean installation of Ubuntu and show you how to install i3 on Ubuntu, but bear in mind you can install i3 on virtually any Linux distribution. Once i3 is installed, I'm going to show you specifically which keyboard shortcuts to use to do some of the things that I've showed you in this clip. Okay everyone, I'm currently on a clean installation of Ubuntu. I'm going to log into the desktop and then install i3, which I can do by firstly opening the terminal and writing in sudo apt-get install i3. I'll be prompted to enter my password and to confirm. I'll enter my password and press Y for yes. And just like that, i3 will begin installing. Once the installation has complete, you can log out. And then from this menu here, you can choose i3 to be your desktop environment. When you log in again, you'll be prompted to configure i3 for the first time. Firstly, you'll have to tell i3 whether or not you want it to generate a configuration file. I recommend that you press enter for yes. Secondly, it will ask you to choose your mod key. Now the mod key can either be the Windows key or the Alt key, and it contributes to the keyboard shortcuts that you'll use when you use i3. I recommend you choose the Windows key, but if you want to choose the Alt key, just use your arrow keys to navigate up and down and then hit enter. And just like that, you're in the i3 desktop. Before I jump in and show you guys the basic commands, I want to help put some of your minds at ease. Looking at i3 now, it looks pretty regressive and frankly pretty ugly, but don't fret. Out of the box, yes, i3 does not look very good. However, it's incredibly customizable. In this video, we're going to look past the aesthetics and focus on the functionality. In a subsequent video, call it part 2 if you like, I'll show you how to configure your system and how to theme your system to look a bit more like the one you saw at the start of this video. With that out of the way, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is open the terminal. Now because opening the terminal is something you do so commonly in Linux, there's a built-in keyboard shortcut for it, namely mod and enter. Now, when I refer to mod, I'm either referring to the Windows key or the Alt key, depending on which key you chose when you configured i3 when you first loaded it. To close the window, press mod, shift and Q, Q for quit. To open an application aside from the terminal, firstly press mod and D. This will open up an application called D menu. It's this black bar at the top with a little search input in the top left hand corner. In that input, you can search for the program you want to load, for example, Firefox, hit enter, and the application will load. To close that window, you press the same key binding as you did for the terminal, namely mod shift and Q, 
remember it's Q for quit. There are a lot of key bindings in i3 to be honest, and it can be a bit daunting thinking about how you can possibly remember them all. Well, most of them are pretty intuitive, especially when you think about the letters in terms of their actions, for example thinking of Q as quit. Next I'll show you how to tile windows. So first of all, let's open a terminal application by pressing mod and enter. Say I want to create a second terminal and I want to tile it to the right hand side. I simply press mod and enter again to open a second terminal, i3 will automatically tile the windows and it will continue to do this infinitely. At which point it starts to look a bit ridiculous so I'll close most of the terminals. And now that I'm almost out of horizontal screen space, I'm going to insert a window vertically. To do that, I'm firstly going to press mod plus V. This tells i3 that the next window that you open should be inserted vertically, but that now when I press mod and enter to open the terminal, it's inserted vertically. Right now, the window in the bottom right has focus. I know this, one, because the cursor is flashing, and two, because the border is blue, which indicates that the, that window has focus. But say I want to move to another terminal. Well, what I could do is I could take my hand and use my mouse, and whichever window the cursor is under will gain focus. So for example, I can give focus to this window and start typing. However, it's a bit of a pain to have to keep reaching for the mouse. I'd much rather stay on my keyboard and that's entirely possible in i3. If you want to move between windows using the keyboard, firstly press and hold the mod key and then press the arrow key in the direction that you want to go. So for example, I want to give focus to the window above the currently focused window. So I'll press and hold the mod key and press the up arrow key. To move to the left, I'll press the left arrow key. To move to the left again, I'll press the left arrow key again, all while holding the mod key. It's all pretty intuitive. The only thing I'll mention at this point that might be a little bit advanced for some of you is that you could optionally use the J, K, L or semicolon keys instead of the arrow keys. Do me a favor and look at your keyboard. The J, K, L and semicolon keys are in a very central position on your keyboard, which means that they're very quick to access. In fact, they're on the home row and in general, people seem to think that the home row is the most convenient place for keys to be. If you've ever used a Vim editor before, these key bindings will seem really familiar to you. If they seem a bit too esoteric and like they're not really worth using, then don't worry about it, just stick to the arrow keys. From this point on, I'm only going to mention the arrow keys, but understand that whenever I mention the arrow keys, you could optionally use the JKL or semicolon keys. At the start of this video, I showed you that you could put the windows in a sort of stacking mode or a tab mode. I'm going to show you that again, but this time with commentary about which key bindings I'm using. To make this simple, I'm just gonna close the two rightmost windows. Now to put these windows in a stacking mode, I press and hold the mod key and S. S for stacking, and then to flick between the tabs at the top there, I press and hold the mod key and use the up and down arrow keys. If I want to put the windows back into the uh, tiling mode, I can press and hold the mod and E key and that will take it back to the tiling mode. To go into the tab mode, I press mod and W and then flick between the tabs using the arrow keys while holding the mod key. So that's mod and right to move right, mod and left to move left. And then if I want to go back into the tiling mode, I'll press mod and E. Me personally, I only ever really use the tiling mode, but your workflow may differ, so it's worth mentioning nonetheless. Something else you may find yourself wanting to do is resize windows to make one window larger than another. Say for example, I want to make this window on the left here wider. Well, to do that, I must first enter resize mode, which I can do by pressing and holding mod and then pressing R. And as you can see in the bottom left, we have a red box with the text resize in it, which indicates that we're in resize mode. Here, I'll press escape to exit resize mode. That red box disappears and watch carefully as I press mod and R again to enter resize mode. When you're in resize mode, you can simply press the right arrow key to make the window bigger and the left arrow key to make the window smaller. What I really mean to say is you should press the right arrow key to make it wider and the left to make it narrower because you can also make the windows taller or shorter if you have vertical windows. Now, it might seem like because we're pressing the right arrow key that it's making the window bigger in that direction, but really it's a predefined key. If I go to the right hand side window, enter resize mode, and then press the right arrow key, it makes it bigger in the left direction, so don't get confused by that. Another thing you might be interested in is how to move the windows about. So say for example, I have terminal two on the right hand side here and terminal one on the left hand side here. And say I want to move terminal one to the right. Well, to do that, I press and hold mod shift 
and then press the arrow key in the direction that I want the window to go. So I want this window to go to the right hand side, so I press the right arrow key and lo and behold, Terminal 1 is on the right. If I want to move it back, I press and hold Mod, Shift and then press the left arrow key. This will become a lot more obvious if I introduce a third window, Terminal 3, and say I want to put this on the right hand side because it's obviously going to read 1, 2, 3, I just simply press Mod, Shift and the right arrow key. For the sake of completeness, I'll also show you that if you have a vertical window, which I can create by pressing Mod and V and then Mod and Enter, you can move this window above by pressing and holding Mod Shift and then the up arrow key, Mod Shift and the down arrow key to move it back. It's really pretty intuitive. Let's close all these windows by pressing Mod Shift and Q. The next feature I want to show you is workspaces. And whilst virtually every operating system now has workspaces, I think they are especially powerful in i3 for reasons that I'll explain in just a little bit. First though, I want to show you the basic idea. So workspaces simply are an easy way to group a set of windows. Say for example, you have a couple of terminals open and you might be writing some commands in this terminal while running a script in the other, for example. And then you think, oh, I want to check the documentation. You open up Firefox by pressing mod and D and then entering Firefox and you've kind of ran out of space. You, the window is just too narrow to read most websites. So at this point, you're looking for a sort of maximize button and you're like, I want to make this window full screen. There is no maximize button in i3. What you really want to do is put the browser on its own workspace. To do that, give the window focus and then press and hold mod and shift and then press at the number of the workspace that you want to move the active window to. For example, I'll move this window to workspace number two. Watch in the bottom left. The number one indicates that I'm currently on workspace one, but as I press mod shift and two, it creates a second workspace. Firefox has moved there, it's no longer on workspace number one, and then to go to that workspace, I just press mod and two, and that takes me to workspace number two. Say I want to move it back again, I make sure that Firefox is focused, and then I press mod shift and one to move it back to the first workspace. The workspace is empty now, if I move to workspace number one, you can see that two is removed from the bar because it no longer exists. You know, one thing I struggled with when I first started using i3 was adapting to this mental model. It's quite radically different than anything I've used before and it does kind of go against the grain of what you've probably used in your experience with computers. So it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but once you do, it is tremendously powerful and I'll show you why on my other computer. So here we are back on my personal computer. The key bindings are going to be exactly the same, but what I really want to do is take this opportunity to demonstrate how powerful the workspaces on i3 can be. I'm using my system because I've obviously configured it in a way that facilitates my workflow. So looking at the bottom left here, you can firstly see that all of my workspaces have icons. I'll show you how to do that in the next video. You can see that workspace number one has a browser icon. As you can probably imagine, if I go to that workspace by pressing mod and one, it's there for my web browser. I can do my general browsing in here, and if I want to open a second window, I often open an incognito window on the right hand side like this, so I can invalidate cookies for web development purposes. Looking at the icon for workspace number two, you can probably guess that this is the workspace for my terminals. I have three terminals open right now, one for Vim, which is a code editor, one for my test runner and one that I just have as a sort of general purpose command line for using things like Git or listing things on the file system. On workspace number four, I've got OBS running, you see? Now this workspace has a question mark because whilst workspace number one I always use for the browser and workspace number two I always use for my command lines, uh, workspace four could be anything. Workspace 9, however, has got a chat icon because it's exclusively used for my chat applications and workspace number 10 is exclusively used for my music player at the moment at Spotify. Something that I think is incredible and this goes beyond just the basic functionality is that say I quit out of Spotify and go back to workspace number 1, I no longer have that workspace and I open Spotify. Look how it comes back again. I've configured i3 in such a way that some applications automatically load on a particular workspace. The reason why I think this is powerful is because I always know exactly where my windows are. 
If I want to get to the browser, as quickly as I can think I want to be in the browser, I can press the mod key in one and I know that that's going to take me there. I have confidence that that's where it will take me. On other floating window managers, I would often have to press the alt and tab key to flick between windows or use the activity overview or might have to sort of move windows around because a window could be hidden behind another one. There's something about i3 for me that makes it so uh, that I can express my intent very clearly and it's a very pleasurable experience. Honestly, I find it very satisfying. With that out of the way, let me quickly go back into the clean installation of Ubuntu and I'll show you a couple more things before finishing up here. Okay, so we're back in the virtual machine. If this was my workspace, I'd have Firefox here and I'd move these two terminals to workspace number two by pressing mod shift and then two as those windows are focused. Now a couple more things I'll show you in i3. First off, if you want to log out, what you need to do is press mod shift and E. You'll see this orange title bar at the top that asks you if you want to exit. You have to use your mouse button by default, but you can if you want to configure it to use your keyboard. If you want to log the screen, and this is the la this has to be the last thing I'll show you, and I'll show I'll tell you why in a second. Go to the terminal and type in i3log. And this will run an application called i3log that basically makes your screen white. Or if you pass certain arguments to the application, you can make it any color you want or even give it a background. And then as you type in your password, you get feedback to ensure that you're comfortable that you've actually entered the character. You hit enter, it says verifying, and then eventually it'll tell me that it's wrong. I'll enter my correct password and Oh, it actually logged me in this time. I was just angling to say that last time I tried this on this particular machine, it wouldn't let me log in, but it's working now. So that is no matter what the last thing I'm going to show you though, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully now you know enough commands that you can start to install i3 and then start using it for your daily purposes and get some first hand experience. At that point, you can decide whether it's something you want to stick with. I personally trialed it and loved it. You know, your mileage may vary, but I hope you enjoy as much as I do. Thanks for watching guys, hopefully I'll see you in the next video where I'm going to show you how to configure i3 to have things like custom key bindings and also make it look a lot nicer.